Perfect squares, perfect cubes, and their roots. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to draw. If you have graph paper, this is going to be easy. Draw a square. As you know, a square is a four-sided figure, and each angle is 90 degrees. A cube, on the other hand, is a three-dimensional figure, not two-dimensional. And every, every side edge is the same. There are six sides to a cube. My freehand drawing is spectacular here. You guys are doing way better than me, probably. But this is what a cube looks like. So we note the fact that all of these are the same length by giving them the same little mark on each side. And of course, in a cube, it's basically a square, six square faces for this three-dimensional figure, right? All of these sides are the exact same. You don't normally have to put those those marks on, but that's that's what it would look like. Okay, a perfect square and a perfect cube. Now, <clears throat> what do we know about this square? Well, this square is if it's uh, let's say this is two units wide, that would make this side two units as well. Okay, in a square, all the sides are the same, so the dimensions, length and width, would be identical. What's the area for this square? Four, right? So 2 times 2 equals 4. All right. Now, if we had a larger square, so I'm going to draw another square here, and let's say that we have a square like this. What's the area of this square if this is 5 units wide? The area is 25 because that's 5 times 5. Right? So when we're talking about a perfect square, and if we're talking about a perfect square number, what we're talking about is any number that can be made into a, a square. So this is this number represents the area of a square where the sides of the square are whole numbers. That's what we're calling a perfect square. So 16 is a perfect square because it's 4 times 4. Okay? Um, what are some other perfect square dimension. So uh, let's say 4. We know 4 is a perfect square, right? Because that is 2 squared. That's kind of neat, isn't it? When we have this power of 2, we call that squared. 2 squared is 4. What's uh, 3 squared? 9, right? Not 6, yeah. No, not 3 times 2. It's 3 times itself. So remember, this is 3 times 3, so it's 9. What's the next perfect square number? That would be 4 squared. What's that? 16. 5 squared is 25, and so on. So you should have these, you should have these perfect square numbers all the way up to, let's say, 20 squared. I want you to write those in your book right now. Okay? Use your calculator if you need to, that's no problem. But I want you to go 7 squared, 8 squared, all the way to 20 squared. I want you to have this list of numbers. So just take a moment, uh, take a moment to do that. And write them out in your book. I want you to start to memorize these perfect square numbers up to 20. In our list here, in our list here, obviously 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and so on. So here's your numbers up to 20, okay, right here. Don't worry about this perfect square trinomials. We're not there yet. That's that's coming. But um, this chart right here is pretty important. And you should, probably should have these memorized. 1 to 10 is easy. You know that already, probably. But 11 through 20, I want you to work on memorizing those, okay? Now, the title of our lesson was Perfect Squares, Perfect Cubes, and Their Roots. So I want to talk to you about perfect squares and square roots. Okay? Now, the root of a perfect square number is the square root. So if this is the perfect square 16, 4 is the root. Alright? So here's your perfect square. And the root is the number in which you would square to get that number. Alright, 
So if we draw a square like that, and you think about, um, let's say we have this, 196. The square root of this would be, you know, the length of one of the sides of the square, the root. And so 14 is the root. If you think about this, here's the roots here. And of course, this is a nice bushy tree, right? There you go. 14 is the root, okay? Where does it come from? Where does that square come from? 14 squared is 196. Now there's certain, there's notation here that you've probably seen before, but this, this sign right here, that looks something like this, is called a square root sign. Okay, it's a square root sign. Square root sign. And so whatever number we have underneath here, it means what is the root of that the square that would be that would have this area. So for example, 64. Okay? The square root of 64 would be if this was the square area, what is the side length? And of course that is 8. Right? And you see that right here. And this chart right here is connected to the uh, perfect square uh, chart over here. So if you take a look at this one right here, 361, that comes from 19 squared. Or you could also write that the square root of 361 is 19. Any questions? When we talk about perfect cubes, it's very similar to perfect squares. Now, the perfect square numbers were the areas of the squares. Perfect cube numbers are going to represent the volume of a cube. So, let's just think about this. If you have a cube that has a side length of 2, and all of these are the same length, how do you find the volume of a cube? So you go length times width times height. You multiply the three dimensions together. So the volume is 8 cubic units, okay? Because you multiply 2 times 2 times 2. Now, if 8 is a perfect cube, and it is, what is the root of 8, or the cubed root of 8, what do you think it would be? What do you think the cube root of 8 would be? Yeah, it is. It's 2. The cubed root of 8 is 2. So, to find perfect cube numbers, you basically would do the similar thing to the perfect squares, and you would say 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is, you do that in your head, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, 27, 4 cubed, now this gets, this gets to be pretty big numbers, so you might not be able to do this in your head yet, but 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, 5 cubed, 125, okay, so I want you to write down all the way up to 10 cubed. Anybody know what 10 cubed is? It's 1,000. Okay, so go ahead and write that list up there. 10 cubed. Complete this list in your notes. So, of course, there's notation as well um, for perfect cubes. So, this is the notation for finding the cube root. It's very similar to the square root, except you have a little 3 right in the notch here, okay, right in this little area right here, you would write a tiny little 3, and that would mean cubed root. So the cubed root of 8 is 2. The cubed root of 125 is what? It is 5. And remember, it's because 5 cubed is 125. So here is your root, right here. 
Okay? Okay, for this example, I want to show you how we can use prime factorization to determine whether something is a uh, perfect square or a perfect cube or not. So if we do prime factorization of 196, 196 divided by 2 is what? Uh, 98. Right? Divided by 2 is 49. Divided by 7 is 7. Okay? Now, if you notice, this is 2 squared times 7 squared. This can also be written as 2 times 7 squared. You see that? Because there is 2 times 7 twice, which is 14 squared. So we know that 196 is a perfect square because it's a whole number squared. Right? But look at, if we, if we write out like this, okay, um, this is the prime factorization, and if you write this out like this, do you see how there are two identical groups of factors? If you have two identical groups of factors, then you know this is a perfect square. So let's just write that note here. So a perfect square number, like 196, will have exactly two groups of identical factors in its prime factor list. And here we go. There's exactly two groups. There's no extras. And these are exactly two of the same groups. Now, I couldn't group these two together and say, hey, those are two identical groups, because they're not. That's 2 times 2. This is 7 times 7. But if you split those up, you have 2 times 7 all twice. See that? So that's the way you can check to see if something is a perfect square. That should line up too. And let's talk about a perfect cube in the same way. <clears throat> so a perfect cube number... Um, so the same holds true for testing perfect cubes. Let me show you what happens when we factor a perfect cube. So the prime factor list here, I'm just going to write it out, all of it out. So it's 2 times 2 times 2. How many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 2 times 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 2. That equals, that's what 512 equals. So... <clears throat> First of all, let's test if it's a perfect square. How many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have an odd number, so I'm not going to have two identical groups. But what you do notice here is that you do have three identical groups. So if a number has exactly three identical groups of identical factors, then it's a perfect cube number. Okay, so that should hold true, and like I say, if you, you know, if you do this even just on your, on your prime factored list, you see, hey, there's three identical groups, perfect cube.